Hello everyone and welcome back to another weekly news roundup on all things World of Warcraft. Today, we'll be looking into a number of things, including a continuation of Ghostcrawler's tweets from last week, more beta changes, class reworks, Mythic Plus affix changes, and finally, buffs to PvP trinkets. First off though, we will be talking about the Shadowlands release dates. As most of you will know by now, Shadowlands will be open to us on the 23rd or the 24th of November depending on the time zone you're in. This means that you'll be able to start leveling your favorite class to level 60, beginning your epic journey into the Shadowlands. So there's no more dealing with corruption gear, essences, neck levels, Azerite traits, and legendary cloak shenanigans. But before Shadowlands hits, there will be a pre-patch event in the form of Scourge Invasions. We discussed this last week on how you could use these events to gear up alts that aren't heavily geared, which will make them more prepared for Shadowlands. Now, Blizzard has informed us that this will be released on the 10th of November, giving us plenty of time to prepare newly dinged characters for when it hits. Seeing as how there's nothing else really happening between now and Shadowlands release, most people have been focusing on leveling classes that they plan to main or have as potential alts. Which classes will you guys be leveling first? Will you be leveling multiple characters or sticking to one character at the beginning of the expansion? Due to the expansion coming out late November, Season 1 of Shadowlands will be coming out on the 8th and 9th of December. This kicks off the new PvP season for Shadowlands, but it also means that Mythic Raiding will be starting on the 15th of December. Now, there have been mixed feelings with these release dates. Even though most people are happy with Shadowlands coming out sooner rather than later, a lot of people are rather unhappy with the release date of the Mythic Raid. Mostly, content creators such as streamers have vented out their concerns. Having the choice of creating brand new content due to the expansion release, typically when the game's subscription and viewership will peak highly, is excellent timing for content creators to gain more traction. So, having to choose between creating content or having their Christmas holiday will add more weight to this decision, making a variety of people upset with this choice. This especially affects high-end mythic raiding guilds, due to almost certainly having to raid on Christmas Day. A lot of high-end guilds will probably be adamant about raiding through Christmas. As such, they will need players to be active or recruit players that can do so. Again, a lot of variations of opinions here, with most people being upset about having to make this choice in the first place. As such, Ian Hazakostis made a couple of tweets to address this issue through the eyes of a World of Warcraft developer. They basically thought that having an awkward Mythic Raid timing release was slightly better than delaying the raid further. Although I personally am excited to see Shadowlands coming out sooner than I thought, I would prefer if the first season and Mythic Raiding were delayed after the holidays in order to cause less frustration with the player base. However, I do see the dilemma that the WoW devs are presented with this, so I understand why they went with this route. Players will be angry regardless of which decision was made, as some may not mind playing through their holidays, while others will prefer to have their holiday then fill their day with WoW after. But what do you all think about these release dates? Are you happy to see the expansion, raid, and PvP season come out sooner than expected, or upset about the potential scheduling conflicts? Let us know down below. On the topic of Ion tweets, players have been recently concerned with obtaining Renown, due to EU being one day ahead due to how the weekly reset works. However, Ion confirmed that this will not be the case, making sure that there won't be an advantage to European players in this regard. This basically nerfs the ability for European players to speed level and gain quite a big advantage over NA players. It's nice to see the awareness on this subject matter, making sure that there's no significant advantage when it comes to the world first raid races, which most players will be happy about. Next up, we have more interesting insight from Ghostcrawler. Once again, he's leveling on the pre-patch, this time on a priest, in comparison to his other melee-loving characters. He basically talks more about his thoughts from not being sure where to start, being confused with the profession system, and even contemplating staying at level 49 in order to not deal with the grind of gear at level 50. He also might be looking to Mythic Raid in Shadowlands, which could be interesting to see how he feels about that, especially due to our earlier discussion. Feel free to check out his tweets on Twitter if you want to see them or even interact as well. Lastly, he states that he can see the appeal of newer players having an easier time to pick up WoW, but at the same time, thinks it can be more difficult for returning players to get sucked back into the game. As a PvP player, being sucked into the game at a young age and playing through all of the expansions, I personally will always be drawn to WoW, especially during different expansions. PvP is often seen as a mini-game within the game, where players battle it out at a very high skill level. This has always been appealing to me as a player even through thick and thin, depending on class balance. If I find myself not enjoying the class in arenas, then I usually reroll to another melee 
melee class that is more powerful, which leads to more enjoyment when I want to actively PvP. However, if my main class is powerful and fun to play, then I usually thoroughly enjoy playing, whether it's 2v2 or 3v3. And that leads me to a PvP related question on how players approach PvP every season. Do you stick to one class or play multiple classes throughout every season? Let us know in the comment section. It would be nice to hear how fellow PvP players deal with seasonal gameplay. All right, on to more juicy stuff. We will cover noteworthy changes on the beta, and there was certainly quite a few of them. First off, Paladins had their Shadow Breaker Dawn of the Sun Legendary redesigned, allowing Word of Glory to now work with it as well. This is quite a sizable buff for Holy Paladins, as typically you'd want to use this legendary if you choose Necrolord as your covenant. The synergy of this legendary with Vanquisher's Hammer will become even more powerful. Even though this change is quite nice, it was needed as Holy Paladins are definitely looking more lackluster in comparison to other healers. And to be honest, this change alone may not even be enough to make Paladins top tier again. That being said, this is at least a step in the right direction. Up next is another rework in the form of a talent choice that belongs to Demon Hunters. Demon Hunter players have recently been finding new love with Unbound Chaos, a talent that has been granting DH's powerful damage with their Fell Rush. Blizzard plan on reworking this on the beta, saying that they didn't like the design of having to use all of your Fell Rush charges during this time, rather than it being used less frequently. Most DH players are upset with this change as they're concerned a rework of this talent will basically result in less pressure, once again nerfing the class. Hopefully Blizzard give it a good reward so that Unbound Chaos can maintain its damage for DHs, or if the damage aspect was compensated in another way. Just straight up nerfing this talent and giving Demon Hunters no compensation will severely nerf them. It would probably put them down on the C tier of melee once again with the likes of Fury Warriors and Enhancement Shamans. We will keep a close eye on the beta changes to see how they rework this talent and if they make any other changes to Demon Hunters as well. Alright, the next topic of discussion is one that we've been heavily talking about throughout the weeks being about the PvP trinket set bonus, which comes from equipping two PvP trinkets. I'm glad to say that our voices were heard and noted, as Blizzard doubled the versatility buff increasing by 40% in PvP instances. Basically, Blizzard's way of solving the issues of PvE trinkets versus PvP trinkets is that they buffed the use of PvP trinkets by making this change. Although it's a step in the right direction, I personally have mixed feelings when it comes to this buff. Yes, it's nice to see that the PvP trinkets are getting more love, but is it enough? We know just how powerful these PvE trinkets are, and if they stay powerful in PvP instances, they could still overwhelm the 40% increased versatility set bonus. If that's still the case, then we would potentially see some classes play with two PvE trinkets anyway. The unique effects of powerful trinkets could be too good to miss out on. At the beginning of expansions, players have a low amount of secondary stats too, meaning the trinket bonus effects will be weaker. Later on, when we obtain higher eye level gear, we will then see a rise of versatility, which could then make the PvP 2 set too powerful as well. One of my dislikes coming as both a competitor and a viewer of the AWC was long drawn out games where teams became too difficult to kill unless you reach a deep dampening stage. A cause of this has been the absurd values of versatility stacking from classes which could be made possible again in later stages of gearing. Versatility is the most powerful secondary stat for most classes, and every spec will stack versatility on their gear for PvP. While it's nice to survive well and not feel too vulnerable in most situations, it can also make the meta incredibly stale if you just know that nobody's going to die until you reach deep dampening. Of course, one way of dealing with this is to simply rework the numbers of the PvP trinket set bonus later on. For now, personally and hopefully, this number makes PvE trinkets obsolete, so we can rely on PvP trinkets being our main source of power in these slots. Then, later on, if versatility levels get too high, they could simply rework the PvP set bonus number in order to not make every class too tanky just because they stack versatility. With all that bearing in mind, what other changes would you like to see for the PvP and PvE trinkets? Make sure to leave your comments regarding this down below. Lastly, on the big beta changes, Mythic Plus players will once again be dealing with tyrannical and fortified affixes every week, as well as the addition of three new ones. These new affixes are inspiring, Fightful and Storming. Two out of three are non-boss enemy effects, while the third can be applied to any enemy, having to deal with said mechanics. As these affixes are put into place, of course it comes with its ups and downs of players enjoying the new mechanics or simply hating them. The biggest upset is in the form of Spiteful, being incredibly difficult to deal with at higher levels of M+. Most players want this to be nerfed or simply gone from the game. Aside from that, players have mixed feelings on seeing the return of Tyrannical and Fortified. 
Usually Fortified is a much more favorite affix than Tyrannical, as Tyrannical can make a lot of dungeons too difficult to complete at higher levels of M+. As such, usually a Fortified week will be the best weeks to push that Raider IO score up leaving half of the weeks during a season less appealing to push on. Many players argue that the removal of the fortified and tyrannical affixes could be Blizzard's best cause of action. I personally would agree with this removal, as the tyrannical weeks make it unappealing for players to play during that entire season. Most hardcore M plus players would simply chill, waiting for the next week to come in order to push higher keys during easier affixes. Speaking of affixes, one affix on the live server has also been nerfed now, and that is the bursting affix. It's now in the form of a dispellable magic buff, as well as dealing a flat amount of damage, which appears to be capped at a mythic 15 difficulty. This gives players much more leeway of dealing with bursting. Knowing its damage limit means that prominent defensive cooldowns will be even more effective with this affix. However, more importantly, since it's a dispellable magic buff, players could reach incredibly high stacks and simply get it dispelled off, negating its damage. So, normal dispel effects, the dwarf racial, or mass cleansing effects such as mass dispel and revival will be a direct counter to bursting. Most players are generally happy with this change, as it could become quite annoying to deal with, especially in pugs. Having more ease to deal with bursting is nice, but maybe Blizzard made this too easy. Also, it could definitely mean more class buys to come during these bursting weeks, with players favoring monks or priests to easily deal with this affix. With multiple nerfs across the board, it could also make it simply too easy to deal with. It will most likely be an affix you'd want to see if it becomes this easy to play around. Alright, moving on to our last topic, which is similar to the first one, being another release date but for Classic WoW. Blizzard has decided to release Nax Ramus, which is the Classic WoW and Raid patch, on the 1st of December, with the Raid coming out on the 3rd. Given how close these dates are to the releases for Shadowlands, it has sparked a lot of controversy and dislike from WoW players, especially ones that enjoy both Retail and Classic WoW. Even for those that don't play both, you can see that this could be an issue, having players choosing to either focus their beginning of the expansion efforts on Shadowlands start or the Naxxramas raid in Classic. Asmongold has recently tweeted his concerns with the release, claiming that Naxxramas should be released in early January instead. Anyway, that covers this week's news on World of Warcraft. We hope you all enjoyed it and can't wait to see how you guys feel in the comment section below. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week.